Okay, so welcome to Poppy. This is super exciting. Poppy is one of my favorite books. I'm going to start out by reading the introduction to you, or like what's on the dust jacket. I think this is probably on the back of your book. It says, it is scary to look Mr. Okax in the eyes, especially if you are a deer mouse and only six inches tall. And three inches of that is your tail. Besides, if you are Poppy, you would rather be dancing in the moonlight. Instead, you have to defend yourself against the tyranny of Mr. Okax, a great horned owl, who, compared to you, is huge. Mr. Okax has declared himself King of Dimwood Forest, claiming that he alone protects the mice from the porcupines. In order to expand beyond Gray House, where they have lived since the farmer left, the mouse family must ask Mr. Okax's consent. Consent means permission, right? Yeah. So, like, if you want to go to the movies, you say, Hey, Mom, can I go to the movies, please? That's kind of what they're doing, Mr. Okax. He refuses, saying that Poppy and her boyfriend... Did not ask, did not request permission for a little dancing on Bannock Hill. That moment begins all the trouble. Frightening trouble, as it turns out, for Poppy must come face to face with a dreaded porcupine and, equally alone, confront Mr. Okex at his most fierce. It's then that Poppy learns there's no bully worse than a bully whose bluff is called. Um, um, What is a bluff? If you're saying you're going to call somebody's a bluff. Yeah, so if you're calling somebody's bluff, you're saying, I think you're lying. Now, are they always lying? No. Is that always a good guess? No. All right, let's see. In this charmingly pictured fable, Avi calls courage by its rightful name and celebrates it. So what I want you to be thinking about as we read the first chapter um, called Mr. Okax. Oh, here's a picture. I don't know if you can see the whole thing on mine. Um, so... Let me bop it up a little bit. Just one second, okay? Um, here is Gray House. And we'll refer to this more and more um, as we go along. But what you need to know is right now they're located at Gray House, okay? I know what? Oh, yep, it is. See, look, way at the tippy top. It's blue right there. So that's recording. This one should be flashing, but that doesn't say it stopped recording. So I think we're okay still, but thank you for checking. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Okax. And we learned that Mr. Okax is a what? A great horned owl, yep. Well, um, met chapter one, Mr. Okex. A thin crescent moon high in the sky shed faint white light over Dimwood Forest. Stars glowed, breezes full of ripe summer fragrance floated over nearby meadow and hill. 
Dimwood itself, veiled in darkness, lay utterly still. Okay, so let's pop back to our picture for just a second. This is Dimwood. Dimwood Forest, and here's Gray House. But they says, Dimwood Forest lay utterly still. And this is Gray House, okay? At the very edge of this forest stood an old charred oak on which sat a great horned owl. The owl's name was Mr. Oakax, and he looked like death himself. Mr. Oakax's eyes, flat on his face, were round and yellow with large ebony pupils that enabled him to see as few other creatures could. Ebony is like almost a black color. So his eyes are so dark, they're almost black. Moonlight, even faint moonlight, was as good as daylight for him. With his piercing gaze, Mr. Okak surveyed the lands he called his own. Watching for the comings and goings of the creatures he considered his subjects, where do you hear the word subject at usually? Usually in schools, what's the subject that math? That was not what I was thinking, but you are spot on. That is one way we hear subjects. That's what I was thinking. Good job. Um, so, like, a king is like, I am a king, da, 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 right? And the subjects are all his people. Good job. Um, so, all the creatures he considered his subjects and his dinners. <laughs> he looked at Glitter Creek. So, okay. So here's where we're at. And so this is Dimwood Forest. This is Mr. Okak's watching tree. And here is Glitter Creek. Okay. He looked at Glitter Creek, Glitter Creek home of the fish. He found so appetizing the tar road across which tasty rabbits were known to hop jay's jay's woods where meaty chipmunks sometimes skittered before dawn by swiveling his head he searched the marsh for a savory frog then new field where he usually could count on a delicious vole or two Voles are similar to mice. They're not mice, but they're similar. He looked at Gray House, where Farmer Lamont used to live, and then upon the old orchard. He even looked nervously toward New House, but nowhere did he see a thing to eat. Profoundly annoyed, Mr. Okax was beginning to think he would have no dinner that night. But finally, there, near the top of Bannock Hill, where the ponderosa pines had all been cut, where only a few struggling saplings and bushes grew, he saw movement. <coughs> Just the glimmer of food was enough to cause his owl's heart to pound, thunk, 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 his curved black beak to crack clack his feathered horns to stand straight up tall mr okak shifted his head from the right to the left forward and back when he did he beheld two mice of all the creatures the owl hunted, he enjoyed mice the most. 
So think of your favorite food. What's your favorite food, Blurt? Just tell me. Burgers. Burgers. Any other favorite foods? Pizza, sushi, ice cream. Anybody like ice cream? Oh. Wings. Chick fil A. KFC. Popeyes. All right, McDonald's. And three, two, one. Back to me. Um, so yeah, his favorite food is mice. It's kind of like you and your favorite food. Do we like mice? No. 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 All right, so of all the creatures the owl hunted, oh, I just read that. Um, they were the best eating, to be sure, but better still, they were the most f f fearful. And Mr. Oakhex found deep satisfaction in having others afraid of him. And here, after a wait of nearly the whole night, were two savory subjects to terrify before he ate them. So have you ever had a have you, do you, and who has a cat in here? Has your cat ever caught a mouse in the house? And, and a cat, and a, and a cat is known for catches it and then he lets it go, right? And then he runs after it and he pounces on it again. And he plays with it before he eats it, right? If he does eat it, but he plays with it. That's what's going on. So Mr. Okax is like, uh ha -huh, ha, I can play with him first, right? All right. Okay. okay. Three, two, one. Back to me. Thank you. Um, one of the two, a deer mouse, crouched cautiously beneath the length of a rotten bark. The other, a golden mouse, stood in the open on his hind legs, his short tail sticking straight out behind for balance. From his left ear, that would be this side on your, you, an earring dangled in his paws. He held a hazelnut. It's not as if I haven't warned these mice, Mr. Okax murmured to himself. If they will move about without my permission, they have only themselves to blame for the consequences. And he leaned forward to listen, his sharp as talent needles. So his, his, uh, his claws, his talons are sharp as needles. Have you ever felt a needle prick? That's how sharp these guys are. Um, four to each large claw and jet black at their tips. <coughs> Cut deeply into the branch he was perched on. Catching these two mice, he mused, is going to be fun. On Bannock Hill, the golden mouse turned his tim to his timid companion and said, Poppy girl, this hazelnut is bad to the bone. Bet you see that to that sap. There's more where it came from. Come on out and give it and dig. Ragweed, Poppy replied as she sniffed tensely in all directions you promised we'd dance when we got here we can't do it in the open besides i want to answer your question so will you please get under here with me so this is poppy she's under the rotten wood and that's ragweed um poppy is um the deer mouse and ragweed is a golden mouse okay Ragweed laughed. <laughs> Dude, you must think I'm as dull as a dormouse. You just want to get some of this nut. I don't want any of your precious nut, Poppy insisted. I want to give you my answer. And I want to dance. Isn't that the reason we came up the hill? Only it's not safe out there. Oh, tell me about it. You heard my father's warnings, Poppy went on. It's Mr. Okex. 
He might be watching and listening. Get off, Ragweed sneered. Your pop talks about that Okex dude just to scare you and keep you under control. Ragweed, Poppy cried. That's ridiculous. Mr. Okex does rule Dimwood, so we have to ask his permission to be here. And you know perfectly well we never did. Dude, I'm not going to spend my life asking an old owl's okay every time I want to have fun. Know what I'm saying? This is our moment, girl, right? And now that I've dug this nut up, I'm going to enjoy it. Besides, Excuse me. Thank you. Besides, he said, it's too dark for an old owl to see me. You think that's the truth? No. Nope. Poppy, Mr. Okex scoffed under his breath. Ragweed, what stupid names mice have. Now, if only that deer mouse will move just a little farther out from undercover, I'll be able to snare both mice at once. The more, the mere thought of such a double catch made Mr. Okex hiss with pleasure. Then he clacked his beak, spread his wings, and rose into the night air. Up he circled, his fluted flight feathers beating in the air silently. High above Bannock Hill, he looked down. The golden mouse, the one eating the nut, was still in the open. So brazen, so foolish. Nevertheless, Mr. Okex decided to hold back another moment to see if the deer mouse might budge. Ragweed, Poppy pleaded, please get under here. Girl, Ragweed said, do you know what your problem is? You let your tail lead the way. Poppy, hurt, and wanting to show that she was not a coward, poked her nose and her whiskers out from under the bark. Ragweed, she insisted, even as she began to creep into the open, being careless is stupid. Who agrees being careless is stupid? If you're a deer mouse or a golden mouse and you know there are owls out there do you think you'd be hanging out in the open or do you think you'd be hiding under the who would be out in the open raise your hand i thought maybe a couple people yeah who would be hiding yeah that's what i thought you might be doing both yep um her friend took another scrape of the nut and sighed with pleasure oh poppy he said you may be my best girl, but admit it, you don't know how to live like I do. Poppy took two more steps beyond the bark. Just then, Mr. Okex pulled his wings close to his body and plunged. In an instant, he was right above and behind the two mice. Once there, he threw out his wings to break his speed, pulled back on his head to protect his eyes, and... Look at this picture. He is huge. And look at how small the mice are. They're running away. Well, I don't know that they're running away because I think Poppy just realized he was coming, right? Well, in, in yeah, with from their perspective, he is bigger than the moon. It's Yeah. And he thrust his claws forward and wide like grappling hooks to pounce. Grappling hooks means um, they're out like this so they can catch what they're they're aiming for, right? What? Yep, perfect. Grappling hooks you can throw up on something. So like if Miss Richardson was into climbing, but you could throw them up and it would hook to the rocks, right? And as long as you have it securely landed in there, then you can climb without fear because you're hooked in, right? I wouldn't want to climb because what if the rope breaks? The rope breaks. You usually, 
you know, usually the ropes have been tested. I mean, you're not going to, I mean, you have to know what you're doing. Um, I've repelled before, not a fan. Um, so I've been on ropes before. They've held me. If they hold me, they can hold you. But there's weight limits to stuff, so you just need to know what you're doing. Now, would I go do it by myself without knowing what I'm doing? Nope. But as long as you know what you're doing, it's fine. You always want to do I skydiving. Do, I do never want to do skydiving. All right. Okay. Ready? One. Ready? All right. It was Poppy who saw him. Lead! She screeched in terror as she hurled herself back under cover. It's Okex! But the owl was already upon them. Down came his right claw. It scratched. The tip of Poppy's nose down came his left claw. It was more successful clamping around Ragweed's head and neck. Excuse me, like a vice of needles, killing him instantly. The next moment, the owl soared back into the air. A lifeless Ragweed, earring glittering in the moonlight, hung from his claw. As for the hazelnut, it fell to the earth like a cold stone. Powerful but leisurely strokes brought Mr. Okex back to his watching tree. Once there, he shifted the dead ragweed from his talon to break in one, <coughs> excuse me, to beak in one gulp. So owls eat the whole thing, um, and then they do. Then they have something called an owl pellet. So the stuff that their body can't digest comes up like puke. Except it's like a fuzzy, it's like a, they call it a pellet. So it's like a fuzzy thing with some bones of whatever it ate. And it's fuzzy because it doesn't digest the fur and the animal and stuff like that. Have you dissected an owl pellet before? Um, I know they used to dissect owl pellets a long time ago. You had to find out what? Oh, what its last meal was? Very cool. All right. Um, the mouse disappeared down his throat, earring and all. His hunger momentarily satisfied, Mr. Okex tilted his head back and let forth a long, low cry of triumph. Woo! Woo! Poppy did not hear the call. In her terror, she had fainted. Now she lay unconscious beneath the length of rotten bark. The owl did not mind. He had enjoyed his first mouse so much, he decided to wait for the second. Indeed, Mr. Okax was not entirely sorry that Poppy had escaped. She was terrified, and he enjoyed that. And for sure, he would get her soon. Oh, yes, he murmured to himself. Mice are the most fun to catch. Then Mr. Okax did a rare thing for an owl. He smiled. I don't know. That's that's a really good question. I don't know for sure. All right, so what we're going to do is you're going to take out your red tablet, and we're going to get started on this at least today. Um, your red notebook it should be already on your desk, right? At the top... Everybody should have one. I put one in everybody's desk, right? At the top, I want you to write down um, chapter one. And the first chapter title was called Mr. Okex. Yes, we're going to put quotes around there because when you're using a small thing out of a big thing, you're going to use quotes. <clears throat> 
So the whole, if we're writing about the whole book, the whole book would be poppy, P-O-P-P-Y, and you would underline it. But because it's just a chapter out of the entire book, you're going to put quotation marks around it. Um, hands on your head when you're ready to go. Okay, looks like we're just about done. Now, one of the things we're gonna spend some time this year working on is summaries. How to do a good summary. So what I want, so hands down, what I want you to do is I want you to think about what do you think were the most important things that happened in this chapter? What was one of the most important things that happened in this chapter? Okay. So I'm going to label this a number one. So we have Mr. Okax. Swoop down. And grabbed Radweed. Okay. Trying to get this in as close as I can get it so you can see it as big as you can see it. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Um, a really quick thing, do you see the margin right here? The red line is a margin. Um, the top is a margin above that blue line. At least it's blue on my paper. Um, and there's like a pink line over here. Those are your margins. So try to keep your words as much as possible between the margins because then um, it gives me some space to write if I need to write on your paper. Does that make sense? Sure, please. Uh, oh, that's a good one. You guys are doing a great job with this. Poppy survived. Okay. Three more. I'm aiming for three more. Um, the owl, Mr. Ox. Okax. Okay. It is rare for him to smile, yep. Mr. Okay, hang on. You said the owl. Mr. Okex. Smiled. Should I put anything else or is that is that include what you wanted to say? Okay. I need at least two more. Can I call it Manic Hill? Is that okay? Okay. So, Poppy... And ragweed. Didn't ask permission to go up. to Bannock Hill. And you that you said it was the mountain, right? 
Okay. Just making sure I spelled it right. Yep. Um, and it does look like a mountain, doesn't it? One other thing that you think was really important in this chapter. Okay, so Mr. Okax, <clears throat> eight, Bragweed. Okay, hang on just a second. Let me finish writing, and then I'll move it up for you. Thank you for letting me know. When I'm looking down at my paper, I'm not necessarily looking up at my screen. Does that make sense? So sometimes I, so if you let me know, I will try my best to make sure you can see what I see. Um. Now, here's where I want us to evaluate it. Let's evaluate it. Now, you guys included some really great important things, right? Does the five things that we picked out from this chapter tell the whole story? No. So what do we need to change so that we can tell the whole story? What would we need to do differently so we can tell the whole story? Yep, she had, but, and, and I, you know, okay, so, I think Mr. Okek swooping down and grabbing ragweed, um, that's an important thing. I agree with that. I also agree that Poppy surviving, that's key to the chapter, right? You would agree with that. Now, the owl Mr. Okek smiled, is that really important for the first chapter? What do you think? Probably not as important as the other two. So I'm going to put a question mark here. Poppy and Rag, we didn't ask for permission to go up to Bannock Hill. Do you think that's a pretty significant thing? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Okax ate ragweed. Now, could I combine Mr. Okax eating ragweed with Mr. Okax swooped down and grabbed ragweed and later ate him? So let's change this and we'll put and later ate him. So we'll take this one off, not because it's not a good fact, but because we're changing stuff around. Now, what is missing from our sentences? So we have Mr. Okek swooped down and grabbed ragweed and later ate him. Poppy survived. The owl, oh, we're questioning missed that one. Poppy and ragweed didn't ask permission to go up to Bannock Hill. What was the whole chapter about? What was the title of the chapter? Yeah, so it's about Mr. Okex. So Mr. Okex is the... Well, he is a main character, but he's kind of like, what does he think? He thinks everybody else is his subject, so he thinks he's the king of the he thinks he's king of the forest right so let's start with this so if we started with Mr. Okax I gotta slide it up hang on Mr. Okax is king of and it's called Dimwood Forest. Okay. Um, Mr. Okex is king of Dimwood Forest. Should we say he, he's a what? Should we put in there that he's an owl? Okay, so Mr. Okex. 
And I'm going to use, um, I'm going to put a, a comma there. And then I'm going to put uh, an owl. And I'm going to leave another, and I'm going to put another comma. So that just tells us Mr. Okex, an owl, is king of Dimwood Forest. Um, so if I put this as number one, the first sentence, the second sentence, could we do, um, should we put something before Poppy and Rag, we didn't ask permission to go up to Bannock Hill? What could we say? I'll, what, what else could we say about him being king of the forest? What does he expect? Yeah, so <clears throat> Mr. Okax and Owl is king of Dimwood Forest. He, he expects, he expects what? What does he expect the mice to do? Yeah, so he expects them to listen to them and it go, he takes it a little bit further and he says what? Not only does he have to listen, he has to They didn't ask permission, right? Mr. Okax expects people to ask his permission, right? Mr. Okax and I was king of Dimwood Forest. He expects, does he expect the frogs to ask permission? Who does he expect to ask permission? The mice who live at, not Dimwood Forest, what was the building we called it? Yeah, he expects the mice at Gray House Now, normally, house isn't going to be capitalized. We're going to capitalize it here because it's the it's a title of something, kind of like your first and last name you capitalize, right? He expects the mice at Gray House, oops, to ask his permission. To what? Yeah, or to be outside of Gray House, right? To go anywhere? Do we want to say go anywhere? To go anywhere. Now, I'm going to move this one down next. That would be our number three, right? Poppy and Ragweed didn't ask permission to go up to Bannock Hill. Well, you're not done with the other one? Okay, hang on. Let's see if I can, you got both of them, right? So I'm gonna change my four to a three. Change this one to a three. And I don't need to rewrite it, do I? So Poppy and Ragweed, and who are Poppy and Ragweed there? What kind of an animal are they? Mice. Didn't they ask permission to go up to Bannock Hill? Then what happened? Who saw them? Okay, so I'm going to put a uh, five down. Wait, four. I'm on four, right? You can turn it to the next page. No big deal. Just do it on the back for me, okay? Okay. Back 
Yep, the back, yep, perfect. Um, so on number four, um, Miss, what did we say? Mr. Okax saw them. Is that what we want to say? Mr. Okax saw them swoop down grabbed ragweed and later ate him. And our last one's going to be what? Poppy, what? Well, she didn't run away, but she survived. We could say Pop Poppy ran away, but she survived, but she survived with a scratch on her nose, right? Now, now that we have five important details from this chapter, and you guys would agree that this tells the whole story and it's the most important details, right? What do you think we should title this chapter? Like, what do you think the whole thing is about? What would cover all of these details? What do you think? Did, pa did pa Poppy and Ragweed save the day? Is that what happened in this chapter? No, but good try, though. What? Oh, would that cover everything? Yeah. Instead of lost a friend, can we say Ragweed lost to, to Mr. Okax? I like lost a friend, but that way it's a little bit more specific to what we're talking about. So if I was to title this whole thing, and I do like Lost a Friend, I'm not gonna fib to you, but um, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna change color just so you can find. Oh, did you have a different idea? Okay. So Lost Ragweed. To Mr. Okax, is that what we want to call it? Is that okay? Yes, nodding up and down, no shaking your head left or right. Yeah, okay. Lost ragweed to Mr. Okax. Dun dun dun. I know. Now, <clears throat> when you have this whole shebang done, you can go ahead and put it away in your desk. Anybody still need it up? Yep. All right, we will talk to you later. Bye.